dream re-entry and dream yoga inductions and focus 10. So that's, those are the three uh, subjects that we'll be, we'll be going over today. And then we'll actually, we'll actually do focus 10 uh, together. So to start focus 10 is the state that Robert Monroe, the author of the journeys trilogy and the founder of the Monroe Institute uh, designated for the state where the mind is awake and the body is asleep. So let's say you meditate or for whatever reason you lay down and you go to sleep and you find that your consciousness is continuing to be aware uh, as your body falls asleep. Or if you've ever experienced sleep paralysis, that is the further, that is one of the further um, conditions that arises in the mind awake body asleep. So I've used this before. It's not an accurate representation, right? Because you know, our experience is not necessarily linear, but if consciousness is the spectrum and if experience is a spectrum, our waking state is, is like this part of the spectrum. Okay. Our dreaming state is this part of the spectrum. The dreamless sleep state is this part of the spectrum. The out of body state, this part of the spectrum. Cosmic consciousness states that part of the spectrum. So we have this spectrum of consciousness and experience that we all have access to, but because our memories and because our orientation is usually generally towards the waking state, even though there's part, there's aspects of us that exist in these other parts of the spectrum, we don't have conscious recollection or conscious um, recall or memory of those conditions or of those states. So for example, we usually don't remember falling asleep. Most people don't remember falling asleep. They remember waking up, but they don't remember falling asleep. Most people don't remember the transition between the dream state and the waking state. Most people don't remember the transition between the dream state and the dreamless sleep state. So all of these consciousness states on the spectrum, there's all, there's also transitions, transitional states on this spectrum. The transitional state between the waking state and dreaming or dreamless sleep state is focus 10. It's mind awake, body asleep. So this is the state where your, your body has fallen asleep. It's completely paralyzed or it can't, it can't move and your mind is awake and, and clear. If you've ever experienced uh, hypnagogia, that's like when you're getting very relaxed, you're getting close to sleep and you start to see your mental images become very clear, um, like three dimensional, hyper real. That's a phenomena that happens in mind awake, body asleep. Another example, let's say I'm, I'm relaxing, I'm starting to fall asleep and then I have like a mini dream, a little mini dream of driving a car and crashing. And then it like shocks you out of sleep. I'm sure everyone has experienced that or you had a little mini dream of falling. So um, depending on how integrated you were into the dream, if this was uh, like a mental image over here, that's still considered mind awake, body asleep. If you really were asleep, then you were already past that and you were, and you were dreaming and your little dream woke you up out of your, out of your sleep. But I've had many experiences of hypnagogia where the images were hyper real. So I called it mini dream. And then I crashed into a wall and it, it woke me up or I, I like came out of that, that state into back into the waking state. So mind awake, body asleep is the landing pad. It is the foundation for entering the dream state consciously, uh, entering dreamless sleep consciously and also having out of body experiences because it's a trend it's a transitional state and generally we don't remember or have experience of these transitional states the transitional states themselves are very unusual right so i'm going to talk about that the what happens 
what what happens when your mind is awake but your body's asleep well some of the one of the things that happens for example is like because you're beginning to enter the dimension of the unconscious these hypnagogic tendencies can become extremely real like this morning i did wake back to bed i woke up at 4 30 i was laying down on my couch and i was just relaxing did hemi sing for 45 minutes could not enter the the dreamscape <clears throat> but then but then i took the headphones off and turned over my side and i was able to get relaxed enough to um to enter to have an entry so as i as i'm falling asleep strange things happen you're entering a liminal dimension you're like about to enter uh another reality essentially whether the dreamscape or you know, whatever it is and in that in between state things can happen for example like you have a sense that someone's in the room but you can't see them or you hear sounds that are not actually there or um and by that what what do i mean that you hear sounds that are not actually there so like one of the kind of like flukes that can happen in these experiences is um, as you're falling asleep or as soon as you actually have an exit, you hear someone knocking, knocking on your door or like saying your name. And then you go out, you're like, Oh, what's that? What's that? <clears throat> and you leave your body, you go to the door, you open it and no one's there or you float through it and no one's there. Okay. But um, you just actually, navigated unconsciously the out-of-body state so some of these flukes are actual like interventions from the guiding intelligence um that is behind the scenes in the out-of-body state to help you actually um navigate or uh, get away from the physical body the further from the physical body you are the the clearer your out-of-body perceptions become so in this non-physical or like in this transition state mind awake body asleep um you're nearing the vibrational state you're getting close to the point where uh the non-physical body is about to be generated or it's about to uh exit the physical body this process happens that we call the vibrational state when this occurs or as this occurs, the first times that it happened to me, I had a lot of just hallucinatory phenomena. I mean, like you're hearing all these voices, you're, it's like tap into the collective unconscious or something and you're hearing a thousand whispers or um, you know, a shadow appears in the corner of the room or you, if it, you perceive that you're in a tunnel of lightning, all kinds of strange, strange things can happen as this, as these first separations um, begin. Now, everyone's different. So, you know, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of people just have very, a very, you know, nothing non-ordinary about exiting the physical body. And they're actually convinced that they're, that they're, that they are awake. Um, that's how ordinary it is. Uh, some people have their first exits like that but for me my my first exits were were pretty uh pretty intense yeah the vibrations were it's like a jet engine roaring inside inside your body i'd never experienced anything like it in my life <laughs> and the fear cuz uh, there's a shadow in the corner of your room and you and it's moving towards you and you're just you can't even scream cuz you're in sleep paralysis right this is commonly referred to as the sleep paralysis demon it's not actually a demon by my experience of it. So your your brain, like the thing, the thing with perception is that, and I've and I've discovered this to be the case. If you've never seen a certain object, or if you've never seen a certain kind of being before, or if the thing that you're seeing is so strange that it would it would frighten you your mind actually modifies your perception of that thing. So I've encountered a being that looked so strange that like, as I was seeing his face, my mind was reconstructing 
how to perceive this person or how to perceive this being because I've just never seen anything like it. So as I'm looking at this, it like parts of its face are actually changing, shifting, moving around because my, my brain or my astral brain, human brain, whatever it is, my cortex and whatever body I was in is having difficulty processing what it is I'm looking at. It's, it's having trouble really putting it together in a way that, uh, make sense so that I don't get frightened. A lot of times, some of these non-physical beings they will they'll appear hooded, or their faces will be, or their face, this part of their face will be covered, so that you only see their eyes, um, or they'll just appear in an unintelligible, or they'll just appear in a way that is sensible to your consciousness, like as a ball of light, for example. For me, the shadow being in the room. Um, this was one of the, what I call tests from the higher self. So when you're about to break through into a new reality, you, at least for me, I, I was tested. And tested in the sense that there was a incredible amount of fear to overcome. And then, you know, I just had to proceed and I, and I, and I overcame it. When the, when the sleep paralysis demon first appeared, I went and told all my friends in high school and they were like, they're like, dude, you're stepping into the underworld. <laughs> you got, you should really stop. And um, I read an article by Robert Bruce where he said, this is one of the classic tests in the out-of-body state. Um, tests are common. Simulate, simulated experiences are common. And they're, they're there for you to grow and for you to push through uh, despite fear or despite whatever challenge is coming up. So, Yeah. Um, I read that he said, it's not a demon. It's just, it's either a test or it's a non-physical helper, but because your brain or your mind has never experienced this before, it just interprets it or just translates it into the perception of a shadow, the appearance of a shadow. And that was very, uh, profound. I'd never, I didn't even consider that, that that was a possibility. And then, so I had to be again a week later uh, exit symptoms happened and then boom, shadow was there. And I noticed that, you know, because of what Robert had said, I, I, I still was afraid, but I wasn't, I wasn't downright terrified <laughs> like I was the first time. <laughs> so then I proceeded with the exit and then I completed the exit and the shadow vanished. So it was, yeah. wasn't, wasn't even, yeah, it was gone after I, I completed the exit. So this, this state, right before the vibrations begin and even while the vibrations are happening actually that's all considered mind awake body asleep so um focus 10 is the is the term that robert monroe gave to this and mastery of entering this transitional state is really the surefire way to have OBEs or to have lucid dreams uh, on command. If you master the liminal, if you master the transitional state of focus 10 of mind awake, body asleep, um, you will be able to have out of body experiences, lucid dreams and enter other realities at will. It's that, it's that simple. The reason that we don't have generally, the people don't have access to entering the dreamscape consciously or entering an out-of-body state consciously at will is because their consciousness shuts off at the liminal phase. Like it shuts off at the transitional point when the body falls asleep. That's it. If the body, if your mind stays awake when the body falls asleep, then you enter the dreamscape consciously. So like in, in Tibetan dream yoga, for example, the main practice is to just be in presence, is to just be aware as these various states occur, waking state, mind awake, body asleep state, dreamless, dreamless, or dream state, and the dreamless sleep state, and to, and to be aware and in presence uh, throughout during each of the, of the states, that's the main, the main yoga, so that they can experience the clear light, the clear light sleepless state, which I mean, most people do not have any no experience of it whatsoever. Um, when the dreamscape vanishes, 
the consciousness or what what happens is that the dreamscape vanishes and then the mind enters or abides in this void clear light state so there's just light there's voidness and there's no capacity to have a thought no capacity to give to give rise to any intentions and it feels incredibly blissful uh incredibly tranquil because the mind is no longer conditioned by anything not even thought or intention so it's really existing in a in a kind of blank state pure uh pure state and what happens is the dreamscape spontaneously emerges materializes out of this clear light and consciousness or the mind becomes re-embodied with a physical uh physical form and in the and is in the dreamscape that has objects and everything and then that dream vanishes and it um was reabsorbed into a into the clear light of mind and then the cycle repeats itself through the whole night so the tibetan dream yogis people who master this practice they really develop the capacity to just be aware through the entirety of these cycles and eventually at the fruition stage of the practice they transition from the clear light of sleep to you know the the most subtle strata of of mind of experience which would be dharmakaya or what they call buddha nature emptiness so that's a synopsis of that uh focus 10 is really just being awake while your body is is asleep if you take that a little further the vibrational state begins or you stay in that a little longer and the vibrational state will begin what what is the vibrational state so as the non-physical body uh is being is beginning to generate itself from the energetic substructure of the physical body that process is accompanied by intense generally intense vibrations and when the process is complete there's either an exit or um there's the capacity to to leave to separate the non a non-physical body from the physical body so as these um vibrations begin or when they happen it's a very it's a very visceral experience for most people even when i experience the vibrational state it's still pretty that you definitely are vibrating like it's not it's not it's not a kind of you know you're not like wiggling you're you're actually your physical body is actually vibrating <laughs> as as this happens and this is really once those vibrations pass or um once the vibrational state has has completed you're in a position that just to to exit um exit the body with with ease the vibrational state can be triggered by an induction technique so let's say i'm in mind awake body asleep but i haven't experienced any vibrations and um I have, I also haven't exited the physical body. There's just, there's a sense of just like resting inside your, your physical body, but it's completely asleep. So to exit, you would employ an exit technique. For example, for me, like the story that I shared about the, um, the shadow in the corner and everything, the vibrations that came with that experience, they started when I entered mind awake body asleep and I employed something called the rope technique. So Robert Bruce, another author, um, popularized the rope technique because he found that visualization-based exit techniques were not suitable for a lot of people. A lot of people just can't visualize. Like um, many of us, if we're artists or uh, visual types, like engineers, we can really see pictures in our mind very clearly, but a lot of people cannot. So you so telling them to use mental pictures to exit the body is very difficult so robert to um circumvent this issue came up with a tactile based exit technique which is the rope technique 
tactile means you're using your sense of you're using your sense of feeling to actually exit the physical body so it's not so much that you're um you are imagining a rope but you're mostly feeling the tugging and the pulling on the rope so what happened when i did this was i imagined that there was a rope in front of me i imagined that i was holding it like this and then as soon as i pulled boom the vibration started and i was like oh my like what the what the heck is this so i just kept pulling and vibrations are getting stronger vibrations are getting stronger vibrations are getting stronger the thousand voices the thousand whispers <laughs> shadow in the corner all of this is happening as i'm as i'm pulling on the rope enter this tunnel of lightning this is the first like real obe i had tunnel of lightning you know all of this so these are all called exit symptoms uh generally i would say you will experience them yeah because every person I've ever talked to that's had an OBE experienced them. Vibrations from the vibrational state, it's an exit symptom. Um, tunnel of light, uh, or like being in a bottle of lightning, uh, exit symptom. Uh, Hank Wesselman, the, the anthropologist that wrote the uh, Vision Seeker trilogy, I think that's what it's called, um, when he would have an OBE, he would see these swirls of energy and stars in his, you'd visibly see them you know, in, in, in the room and uh, grid patterns of light. And then the grid patterns would coalesce and uh, make a specific formation. Then he would open his eyes and he'd be in the body of uh, a shaman from 5,000 years in the future. So that's, what would happen to to Hank? Those those swirls and the grid patterns and the the feeling of tunneling, the feeling of of motion. These are all considered exit symptoms. They all happen in this specific transitional state. Now, when you're falling asleep and you're trying to have a wake induced lucid dream, you're you're entering the dreamscape. That also comes with specific symptoms, and I'll I'll explain that. The first wake-induced lucid dreams that I had, I've had a couple interesting transitions. So one one time I was laying down and I used the memory from a previous dream. And as I was remembering that, that dream while I was falling asleep, I started to feel this, this movement like this, like this bobbing, you know, like, like being like, just this movement back and forth, like a subtle, a subtle rocking. And I continued to, to feel myself in that scene, to feel myself in that, in that memory, that dreamscape. And then you hit, I hit some kind of demarcation line and a screen appeared in my astral vision. So I could see it visibly. I put my attention on that screen and the screen went like this. And then, <laughs> and as the screen, and as the screen rotated, my consciousness followed it. And as my consciousness and my attention followed the screen, that made my non-physical body rotate. And then it swirled like this. And then I followed the screen, like as it moved through this, like a whirlpool. And then boom, I appeared in the dreamscape. Very, very strange transitional a uh, very, very strange transition, but extremely real, extremely visceral. As real as this, as this moment. Another another lucid dream induction was to remember a beach that I had that I had been to in a dream. When you use dream, when you use images, scenes, people, places, situations from dreams, those images are from the dreamscape. You know, they have the signature of the dream. They're from that part of yourself. They're from this inner dimension. So they're keys. All the dream memories that you have are, are keys to those places in your imagination or in your subconscious or in your dreamscape, whatever, however it is we want to define that. So using this uh, memory of a beach in a dream, I remembered it. I'm falling asleep. I'm starting to fall asleep and 
I start to feel myself at the ocean. And similar, there was this rocking back and forth. You know, as the as my perception there is becoming clearer and clearer. And then just it just clicked. I just consciousness just transferred and and I was there. One moment I was in the bed, the next moment I was feeling the water and I was actually in, in the water, in the dreamscape. So dream re-entry is really easy if, or OBEs in general too as well, if you're able to wake up and not move. It's an interesting concept. Like we, this is probably something you've never done before, or maybe you've done it, but done it once or twice and you don't have much memory of it wake up without moving and without opening your eyes and just see just try that just wake up without moving and without opening your eyes so that means your first moment your eyes are going to be closed and you're going to have the experience of keeping your body still and really being in the being and experiencing your first moment of the day, your literal first moment of the day. So when you experience your first moment of the day, don't move, don't move. This is also a, this is also a, a gate for meditation and for awakening as well, to just be aware in this, in this first moment of the day, because it's, because if you're able to relax, you just you experience the unconditioned mind. You haven't really thought stuff or planned anything. So it's a really easy way to experience stillness and, and presence. Your first moment of the day, just rest in it. Keep your eyes closed. Don't move your body. And you can either use an OBE exit technique or you can use a lucid dream induction technique. If you use a lucid dream induction technique, you remember a dreamscape, you'll be pulled into the dreamscape. If you use your target method for OBE and it's outside the body, you'll proceed in, in that fashion. It may not work the first time, but try it. You know, try it, try it four or five times and see, just see what this state is like. This is this is gonna be a new state for you. Generally, we wake up and we're out of the bed or we wake up and we're like, oh, I got to do this. Like, that's the first thing that comes to our mind. Oh, I don't want to get up. You know, so prime yourself and prepare yourself the night before to wake up a little earlier, just so that you can experience this first moment of your day, unconditioned, um, without needing to jump out of it so quickly. It's it's a fresh awareness. It's your first first moment of recollection, your first moment of genuine being conscious of your day so experience it and you can begin to use that as a launching pad this is one of the best ways to do a dream re-entry i just did it this morning i did three of them so every time that i woke up from uh from the dreamscape i just i found myself on the couch and then i i didn't move and then i just a couple times I opened my eyes automatically, but then I just closed them again. And then I imagined a, a dream memory and then boom, it just brings you right back into the dream with, with lucidity now because you're doing it because you're doing it consciously. So um, that's a way to to have like, let's say, you know, you wake up at 430 and you don't have anything to do that day and your day doesn't really start until 7 30 every time you wake up between 4 30 and 7 30 literally every single time you can do a dream re-entry induction and bang have another lucid dream <laughs> so or an obe right every single time you wake up you can just not move employ an exit technique and you have another experience you have another lesson you're back in the dimension of teaching or back in the dimension of being taught being guided it's great it's incredible so really learn to to master and to navigate and to rest in these transitional states the transition from 
sleep at the big the transition from the waking state to the sleep state at the beginning of the night um in dream yoga this would be also a state that you're developing awareness in uh, every night every time you go to sleep every single time write this down on a piece of paper put a notification on your phone because all all you have to do is just remember this every single time you fall asleep whether it's for a nap whether it's wake back to bed, whether it's the beginning of the night, employ an exit technique. There, there. Choose a technique, and just employ it every single time. So for me, there's a specific uh, inner dimension that I'm working or that I have my attention on. So every time I sleep, every time I take a nap. And every time I uh, transition into a dream or into a sleep state, I remember this place that I'd been to before in an OBE because I want to go back and explore and communicate with the beings there and see what this whole thing's about. So I'm, I'm using that same image every single time. And that tends to be the best, um, it tends to be the best approach in the sense that you're like conditioning your mind to really become used to moving into this particular area or moving to that particular place or person. So people have different views on it, right? Some people say you can use different techniques as long as your awareness is oriented outside your body. It doesn't really matter which one you're using. So there's definitely a, um, that's definitely a, a position that people have and it, it makes sense but generally if you just use the same technique it's just it's just easier for your subconscious and it's just easier for your mind to really go there once the once the exit actually happens so like my view is that if you're using three different techniques um might not be as effective as just using one but Every person is different, so I can't say sometimes sometimes trying a bunch of stuff is exciting <laughs> and that excitement and you consistently trying is enough to actually make it happen. So it just depends on, on each person, you know. If you trying all the techniques is the only way to get you to do it every night, then I say do that. You know, if if doing one technique is too boring for you and you're, you're the kind of person who just likes to you know, put their hands in all the pots and try everything. As long as your hand is in a pot, please proceed. So, um, you know, there's not, I don't, I don't believe that there's always one set way to do things. Okay. So dream re-entry, the secret is to just not move when you wake up. Don't move. Employ an induction technique, relax, boom. Or an exit, you know, target method, whatever your whatever your OBE exit exit method is. Let me see, was there anything else to touch on? Um, I think that's it. Yeah. That's it for today. And we can actually do, uh, we can actually do fo focus 10 now. So if you can, and I really recommend this because it's, it is, it is critically important. Um, do focus 10 as much as you can. So focus 10 and this particular exercise is from Robert Monroe's gateway program. It has five, he calls them waves. So like five CDs five sections and it's a it's like a mini version of the gateway course that people take at the Monroe Institute people still take it today um and the thing with the with the home study course or with the gateway as it is on on YouTube is that you can do like focus 10 once or twice or three times and then you and then there's just you know you want to do the rest of the waves and you want to um, do the rest of the program and you can, but if you don't, 
master focus 10, you're not really going into these other focus levels um, with skill or you're not really going into them fully being in mind awake, body asleep. So Barbara Monroe has focus 10, which is mind awake, body asleep. Focus 12, for example, which is a, a space of consciousness in mind awake, body asleep, or a little further than mind awake, body asleep, where you're able to access intuition and information from the mind. You can ask a question, enter focus 12, and just be in a receptive state and see how the mind responds. It's considered, focus 12 is what he considers, calls it expanded awareness. Focus 15 is no time. So that means the hemi-sync hemi frequencies are guiding your body and mind into that given state. So the hemi-sync frequencies help you stay aware into focus 10, whereas usually your body would just fall, your mind and body would just completely fall asleep and lose consciousness. So this is the function of the frequencies and of hemi-sync. Um, by using the technology, your brain and your whole system gets oriented to new states that it wouldn't have access to ordinarily because it just falls asleep too quickly. So, of course, you don't need to use hemisync. You know, none of the shamans <laughs> were able to use hemisync, but um, it's really useful, and uh, I use it. I use it regularly. So. Of course, you want to be able to have OBEs without hemisync, but it's a it's a really good tool, uh, at least to just get into these spaces and begin to navigate them. So, so of course you can, can you can proceed with the waves if you really you know the rest of the playlist on YouTube if you really like it, but focus ten is really where, I mean, you want to do it many 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 times until you're able to just enter mind awake body sleep and then transition to a lucid dream or an out of body experience with with ease right so it, so it may take doing it i don't know depends on each person you might do it three times and have an obe it may take five times you know for me it took many many times of attempts and of using um hemi-sync and whatever before I had my first OBE. I think I, I think I, I had my first lucid dream probably within a month, but I didn't have my first OBE for like two and a half months, two or two and a half months. And I was trying daily. Like I was doing wake back to bed like four times a week, you know, it was crazy, but eventually it worked. So it's just a matter of persistence. This is one of the lessons I keep, I keep getting in the, out of body condition and in a lot of this exploration, like a lot of it comes down to just doing it again and again and again until it finally clicks. So there's an adjustment period and your persistent attempts is actually part of the adjustment. Like the adjustment doesn't happen unless the attempts are done, right? Like your energy body, your mind, your system does not acclimate to the new state without actually doing the thing. So that's really where it's important. Every time you, you go, you like, let's say tonight I'm falling asleep and I'm doing an induction technique as I fall asleep and I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware. And then boom, I lose consciousness and I fall asleep. So tonight or tonight compared to last night, I was more aware aware for longer than I was the night before. Tomorrow, I'll be aware for a few more seconds or maybe one second more than I was today. And so on and so on. It, it, it continues. Every time, you, every time you do this and every time you relax with awareness and use the induction technique, you go, you experience a little more of the transitional state until you really experience the full transition. So every time, it, every time counts. It's very easy to get discouraged in doing this. You know, it's possible that for whatever reason, um, you know, there, there are kinds of meditations that just don't work for me. I just, I just, I just can't do them. 
you know, or like certain energy stuff, Kundalini, like whatever. A lot of people, they experience a lot of physical bliss and ecstasy and it's just, just not a thing for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have to, don't, don't beat yourself up. You know, if you give the, the, the important thing is that you give it a shot and, you know, you, you actually apply the technique and that, that expansion is sufficient and is useful for your consciousness and, and development, regardless of if an exit ever happens. The fact that you actually did this and applied yourself is, is important in of itself. So, all right, that's, that's the talk for today.